Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we've got something really exciting. We're working with Prusa's brand new slicer, which is Prusa Slicer 2.0 and they've really done a fantastic job adding some awesome new features to this and it feels a lot more polished now and it's generally just such a better experience to use and it's still free, which is incredible. So what I'm going to be doing today is showing you how you can add custom supports to your models for your 3D prints. And it's so, so simple now that they've added these features. So let's have a look. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just add in a model. And for this, I'm gonna be using the Batman model because this is quite a useful one to demonstrate supports. So basically, there's two ways you can go about this. The first way is you can, either, you can add supports everywhere and block out the areas that you don't want to add supports to or the other approach is to not generate supports everywhere but enforce them in the areas that you tell it to so i'm going to show you both ways of doing this and the reason there's two methods is because depending on what model you have one might be easier and less time consuming than the other so it's up to you i just kind of want to get you thinking on how you may, might approach it depending on your 3D model. So what I'm gonna do first is just show you the first example where we generate supports everywhere. And what we wanna do in the top right here, first of all, I'm just gonna select expert mode. I don't. I believe you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna do it for this tutorial. And what we wanna do then is come down to supports and we wanna change this to everywhere. And we don't have to worry about the other settings for now. We're just concentrating on supports. So what I'm going to do is slice that so that you can see what happens when we generate supports everywhere. And basically what's going to happen is the algorithm is going to decide where it thinks supports need to be placed so that we can successfully print this 3D model. And as you can see there, it's decided to place them in these areas. And to be honest, this algorithm typically does a pretty good job and you can rely on it most of the time however sometimes you may want to add some more just to be a bit more sure of you that your print will be a success so what i'm going to show you is how to block supports from this auto generated support right so let's say we were happy with this on the bottom half and we thought right okay the supports on the back look good, the supports on the front and the sides look good too, but we don't want we don't want any supports on the head. So what I'm gonna do, come back to the 3D editor view and we're gonna need to add a blocker. And to do this, it's so much easier now. You used to have to double click and it'd open up a new window and then you'd have to go through all these other things. But all we do now is right click on the model and come down to add support blocker. And there's a couple of options here. You've got box, cylinder, sphere, or slab. And we're just gonna choose box. And what this will do is you'll see it'll add an object onto the workspace. And what we wanna do is scale that object so that it's big enough to cover the head of the model. And we can do this with these nice new tools on the left. So we've got a move tool, a scale tool, and a rotate tool. So we click on the object. And we're going to scale it, so we're going to click this one here. And as you can see, we've got these sort of nodes that pop up around the object. And you can grab them, and you can scale uniformly from corner to corner. Or you can grab, uh, you can scale lengthwise or heightwise. So we're just going to concentrate on a uniform scale, just so we've got a decent size to cover the head. Once you've done that, we want to grab the Move tool. And what we're going to do is just move it into the area where the head is going to be. So if we scale that back, bring it up, you can see that the object is gonna cover the head, like so. And when you click off the object, you'll see that it's gonna be a red box. And what this means is that that is a blocker. An enforcer will display as a green box and a blocker will always be a red box. So that's basically all we do to tell it where we don't want supports to be. And that's it. So all we do now is re-slice. And if we come back to the preview tab, it should auto-generate on its own. And you can see there that 
support have now been generated around the edges again where we wanted to keep them but where we've told it not to generate support it hasn't and this is basically approach one and um, while that's a relatively simple example the concept applies to anything else so any other 3d models you might want to do this multiple times so for example i'll do it one more time but we'll block the support on the back as you can see there we've got support on the back that help hold it up as you print. So what we're gonna do is add in another object. And again, we come back to the 3D, 3D editor, just right click, add support blocker, and we're gonna choose a box again. So we're gonna position it just as we want it so that it's in position to block those back supports. So we're just gonna drag the arrow, drag it again, nicely, and roughly line it up. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And what we're going to need to do now is scale that. So we're going to grab the scale tool, scale it all the way up, drag it up into position, click off it, and again, you can see it's in that red box. And that's basically it. So if we slice once more, you'll see that it'll re, it'll re slice the whole model and it'll generate supports. And again, it's not generated supports in that area that we've told it to block. And that is all there is to it for method one. So what I'm going to do now is show you method two. So if we go back to the 3D editor view, I'm just going to delete these objects. And now just to demonstrate, if I do re-slice, you'll see that they'll be generated there again on the head and the back, right? So if we just show you that, you should be able to see, there we go. So they're all back because we've deleted the blockers. But for method two, what we're going to do is not generate supports everywhere. We're going to enforce them in objects that we tell it to, which are enforcers. So on the top right in the print settings, we want to click that supports drop down and we want to change it to for support enforcers only. Now, if we, we re-slice, you'll see that it won't add supports with this setting enabled. And that's because we haven't enforced any. So what we're going to do to enforce supports is come back to the 3D tab and exactly like before, we right click the model, but we come down to add support enforcer and we're going to choose a box. So what we're going to do is add it to the areas where we saw the algorithm suggested, right? So we know that we need some on the sides and the back and probably the head too. So what we're going to do is generate these ones on the sides. So we're going to have to scale. So let's make it a little bit, bit wider and we're going to make give it some height as well. And now we're going to position it into place. So we want it to be around about there. So that should give us enough supports just to help it print. And here's the awesome part. So rather than have to add a new object and scale it, we can just click the object, control C, Control V and it just pastes a new one in and you couldn't do this in the old one So that even even little things like that makes such a big difference. So again, we're going to move it into place Like I said doesn't have to be perfect just roughly get it right and Drag it in a tad and again, we're going to do a control C and a control V so that we can add them to the back So we want to position it Drag it out a little bit. And what I'm going to do now is just slice it as it is, so you can see. So now we've got these um, blue boxes. So enforcers are actually blue boxes, sorry. So uh, blockers will appear as red, enforcers will appear as blue. So what we want to do is slice, and this will show you the supports are now generated in the areas we've enforced them. So it's opposite to before, right? So as you can see, it's generated more than the alg algorithm suggests. So the algorithm is also trying to save you plastic at the same time. So it's kind of compromising between supports and saving you plastic and print time. But if you add supports manually, chances are you're gonna get a more consistent print. But you have to use more plastic. So it's up to you really. That's why this software is awesome because it's so customizable to each person's needs. So just to demonstrate again, we're going to now add supports to the head. So if we come back to the 3D editor, we right click, 
add support enforcer box and just like before we're going to scale that up uniformly so we can increase the size drag it upwards on the z-axis drag it across drag it onto the head ah, let's just make sure that's right we need to bring it down a bit i'd say so we can get the neck in there too and there we go so if we slice this check out the preview we should now see that we've got supports pretty much everywhere that they need to be and it's added a lot more of them around the head also and that's it that's basically all there is to it it's become so much easier in this new slicer and i'm really grateful to prusa for releasing this and keeping it free it's awesome when you think about this kind of software and what you get for free so that's it for this video uh, I'm going to be making a lot more tutorials on this new slicer so if you want to stay up to date with them hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video so before you go I just want to say thank you so much for watching I really do appreciate all of you that subscribe and watch my videos it means a lot if you're new to the channel consider subscribing for more videos and please leave a thumbs up on this video if you found it useful if you want to support me in other ways, there's a link in the description below where you can do that, but it's up to you. If you want to see more of my videos, click one of these, and I hope you have an awesome day.